Today we're going to be looking at replacing the glycol pump that came with the UBC glycol chiller, uh, which cools the beer lines on your system. Um, and this part right here that is covered in styrofoam, this is the actual pump. This is the motor. We don't have to do anything with this. And what we're going to be doing is uh, removing some screws and removing some connections from these Odeker clamps here and putting the new pump on and reconnecting our glycol lines with screw clamps. The tools you're going to need to get these done uh, is going to be your uh, new supplied pump, some channel locks, vice grips, or uh, some needle nose pliers. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver, a razor blade, should have been supplied with some screw clamps. And then uh, you should also have a new glycol pump key uh, coupler and bracketing system. First thing you want to do is uh, turn off the pump or um, remove power to it. So sometimes your glycol chiller, uh, the big box, big black box, will have uh, two of these motors on it. So you can either uh, unplug it, it should be plugged directly into the wall uh, if it's one of the secondary motors, or if you're looking at the front of your chiller with the thermometer readout, you'll see a red and green switch. First thing you want to do is turn off the green switch. That'll turn off the motor, and so that will uh, stop liquid from being cycled through the pump. Uh, the primary motor is also plugged into the front of the chiller. Uh, you can unplug that as well if you want to. It's not totally necessary. Uh, but it never hurts to be totally sure that you can get no sort of electrical current while you're working on it. Removing this Odeker style clamp can be kind of tricky. You'll see that it has some tabs that would kind of keep it in place. If you don't have the specific crimps for it, it can also be extra difficult. Uh, you can use channel locks, you can use needle nose pliers. But the goal here is to sort of twist this bad boy and loosen up that clamp. Widen it out a bit here. And it's probably going to, in the process, damage the glycol line here. It's not too big of a deal. We'll be able to scoot the glycol chiller closer to the trunk line or we can I pull some of the trunk line closer to make up for that lost space. So if we just sort of adjust here. So I sort of wiggled out this much with just the pliers. Just have me yank and twist the whole thing. It might be able to help us pop out what we need. Actually, I've knocked it off. Let's see if I can loosen it anymore. So just by pushing down on it that way, we've actually got it off the line there. That oftentimes just becomes just a twisting point. So yeah, perfect. So kind of, it'll yank out just like that, and that's what you typically want it to be like. It away. And it's important to note that once you loosen these connections, um, <clears throat> glycol is going to come out. So if you have a bucket handy, once you are able to kind of loosen the connectors here, and we're going to sort of cut a little slit here to be able to pull this off, the glycol will dribble out or kind of steadily pour out uh, since you'll kind of be on the lower side of gravity from it all. So just be aware of that. So from there, this will be really difficult to sort of twist and pull. 
might be able to do it. And you can actually preserve any lines if you didn't, didn't cut on it. But much like with the braided, if you want to just make a really small little notch in there, take a flathead screwdriver just to kind of help bow it out some. You might be able to just pull and move it just like that. A little bit of elbow grease. But we need to remove this braided line here, so our supply line from the glycol reservoir to the pump itself. Uh, once you've got your Odecure clamp ripped off, um, we need to preserve as much of this braided line as possible. Um, if you cut off too much, it'll be too short to reach. So the, there's a few different things you can do. The first thing you can do is just a pure, just kind of rip it and rip it type of model where you're just kind of twisting and pulling to get it off. That can be really tricky to get off those barbs. Um, you can additionally take your razor blade and cut, you know, not even a quarter of an inch on that line. Just a small little tab into it is all you're going to need. Let's see if And kind of once you got that in, you could take a, a flathead screwdriver. I've got an extra small one that can kind of help you flare it up and out a little bit. Additionally, just pull again like that. Um, anyway, to save whatever braided line you have that you're cutting a bunch off and uh, can conserve material supply to you, is remove the pump from the motor. And the way to do that is to take your Phillips screwdriver. You're gonna have these two brackets right here. You see they take Phillips screwdrivers. Just unscrew those so that the screws pop out. You see how they are connected there. So I'm looking at the inside to see we have our let's take this off. Okay. You see we have our glycol pump safety pump key here with the coupler around it. See how this all works. So you see this key fits on this tab right here. And so this is your actual pump and I have a little bit of resistance. It feels pretty snug. So this you can see that it's got a bearing around it and it's possible that it's just really worn down and grimy and so your pump key would be all thrashed out so it wouldn't have this little notch in the center. Um, because let's see, got this set right there, so the pump key fits into there, just a little kind of loose, and it will connect to that tab, and that's what the since we're connected to the motor that way, that's what actually propels the pump to send glycol through your system. It's going to be a little easier in the long run if we get the new pump connected to the motor first, and then we'll get our new lines put on for the process for doing that. Uh, take your new pump, and pump key, bracket, brackets, and coupler here. 
Uh, you'll note that on your coupler, you've got this little notched side here. It's flat there. That notched side is what goes into the pump. So be aware of that. And so this notch here is what goes onto the pump itself. Back end is what goes on the tabs inside the pump, or on the motor, excuse me. And the motor often spins a little easier than the pump does. So here I just have the, the coupler on in one bracket. So to get this tightened down first. See if this helps us out some. Because trying to hold all that together and keeping everything in place and tight and secure is not an easy task. clicks into place that you can kind of see this this little housing will kind of connect into place and that's as tight as you can get for that that bracket is nice and connected on there Again, we've got the pump key already put on the pump. And since we're not connected to any lines, we can sort of guide this into place on the motor. Feel those notches here. There we go. Should just kind of fit right in there. So now, get our second bracket on there. Hold it into place. I see I'm holding the ends of that bracket to kind of keep it tense. It's gonna loosen a little bit once I start screwing that in. It's kind of make sure we're still staying clamped. Put some pressure on the top. here. So I'm just kind of, now I'm holding it from the top. Getting it screwed in. pretty good. Take a look. We are nice and secured. That's how to swap out the, change out the pump key connection. And this is how we attach the new pump. So now we just need to reattach our glycol lines with the screw clamps. All right, so now we're ready to put our lines back on and the sending line will go from the pump into our trunk line. We had some of it torn off here, so you might be able to adjust the trunk line, kind of pull it towards you, or you can scoot the entire glycol chiller a little closer to where it needs to be. We're gonna take a screw clamp, actually gonna take two screw clamps, force it down pretty much to cover the entire barb. 
And from there, you're just gonna tighten your screw clamps extra tight. You really wanna emphasize getting these screw clamps nice and tight. Um, that's why we bring, give you so we supply two, um, just to be a little extra cautious. Uh, if you don't have any of the other clamps handy, uh, having two is a good way to really secure it. And so all we have to do next is the same with our clear braided line. And again, um, we uh, recommend that whenever you are taking it off, you do a little cut there just to kind of flare it out. Take a Phillips screwdriver and just kind of help wiggle it off there. Cause, um, sometimes there can be just barely enough line to work with when you have to reapply it. And so in the same manner as with our blue line here, tilt this a little bit for you. Grab your screw clamps, stick them on the line itself, and then put enough of the line on the bar so you can fit two screw clamps on and tighten those. Our new pump key is in place, our new pump is on, our supply braided line from the chiller into the pump is there and then the glycol uh, line that goes from the pump to the trunk line itself is all connected everything is tight at this point go ahead and flip on the green switch or plug in your pump and that'll activate it and that'll make you um, that'll help you see if you have any leaks at this point so go ahead and flip that power on and see what happens once you've got the pump on and you're not seeing any leaks anywhere, you are good to re-insulate the lines. So on the supply line, um, you had this foam guy here uh, that can just easily slide off whenever you are um, we're going to disconnect everything. Just go ahead and take a razor blade and just kind of cut down the middle of that. kind of have it open. I um, also recommend wrapping this in some tin foil if you have it handy. Not totally necessary, but it'll help cut down the mess. So that'll just kind of go around there. And then you can just use electrical tape to wrap it around this and, and seal that up. Then the same with your I call line here, you'll notice that it was probably wrapped in tin foil. So it needs to be wrapped in tin foil. That's what cuts down on the condensation. So we wrapped in tin foil and then also has some of the, they've had the trunk line insulation that looks like this around it. So that would fit over. And then in the same way, you can just use electrical tape to seal up the crack there. And make sure it's all running. Uh, that is, how you would replace the glycol pump for your bottoms up system.